Oh, love that smell of fresh PCBs in the morning. Welcome back everybody. We're going to make another controller today. I know we've been talking about making controllers forever and I wish we had time to make more videos, but we're here, we're doing it now. And this controller I've been wanting to build for a while is here. As you can see on the table, this is the first one that I built using this method. Uh, it came out really nice. I'm sure anybody that follows me on Reddit has seen this already before a while ago. And this one right here, it's a completely blank shell for a controller. This was also manufactured by JLC PCB. Uh, came out really nice. It's actually fairly heavy, um, but it's completely blank, no controller in it. Now, this one is what we're gonna be using today. This is a redesign of the same controller housing that I have now painted. I also 3D printed it uh, and with little red accents because it's gonna be a red and black controller. Um, Kind of got inspired a little bit by the Razer controller that came out. Granted, this thing's not gonna have LEDs in it or anything, but the, I think it's called the Kitsumi is the Razer one that came out. But this is going to be really light. It will work on pretty much everything up to PS5. Unfortunately, I can't exactly tell you how to do that for the PS4 or PS5 in this video. Uh, if you find the links online, you can follow them and find out actually how to do that. But we are gonna put this controller together. It's gonna to be a really cool red and black theme. I'm gonna get into the 3D printing aspect of it, all the things that I went through. And yeah, we'll get into what's in this controller, what kind of buttons we will be using. Um, also be getting into obviously these little buttons here. These are 3D printed as well. We have a PCB. So this is a box from JLC PCB. Uh, it has something in it. What does it have in it? What does it have in it? So this has, this has these, these are PCBs I had manufactured from JLC PCB. Uh, really, they did, they did an amazing job on these things. They do actually have the ability to add hot swappables. Unfortunately, those are still sitting in the mail waiting to get here. But we are still gonna make this controller and put it together using these PCBs. Um, and this was made by J Fedora 2. Um, he actually helped me out because I actually had trouble when I first made the first one uh, with the code after flashing it because it was giving me shit. He actually helped me out on Reddit and showed me where to go to actually get better code that will work with this board because he designed it. So um, shout out to him. He's the one who actually really originally designed this PCB along with the housing. So, so the first thing we have to do, we have to add something to these boards so that we can actually screw them together. In the end, um, we're going to do that with a soldering iron. And they're these little, little tiny inlets. And I'm sure you've seen other people do these in the videos. Uh, you just put them at the end of a soldering iron and kind of just like shove them into the plastic a little bit. It's gently, it's a process, it's a technique. We'll show you, it's not that hard. It does take a little bit of practice, but a few tries and you'll get it. Um, and that allows us to add screws on the other end. And that way they'll be really, really secure because they're gonna be inside a metal housing uh, instead of in the actual plastic, which we'll eventually wear. After that, we're going to be adding these little accent, little side things. I'm um, actually going to glue these down uh, onto the side. And then it's a matter of, we're going to add some buttons onto the PCB. We have to solder them along with uh, some little tiny little buttons on the top there, but yeah. As I got the inlets in for the screws, that's all set. We're gonna actually take these little side, little accent pieces that are gonna go on there. We're gonna actually use um, some super glue to uh, adhere these to the side. Then after that, before we put it together, we have to add obviously buttons to our PCB.
Okay, so now that the housing is all set and ready to go, we have to prepare the PCB, uh, which means we're going to be adding some low profile Kali switches, which are great for this kind of project, along with some tack switches, which I have in a number of colors here. So let's get to adding these onto the PCB. Then after that, we're actually going to flash the firmware onto here so that we can start using it. PCB is ready. Now we have to go to this website and get some firmware we can download. So go to this website and go to downloads. Used to be, you can get the Raspberry Pi Pico version uh, and it would work. There is now a separate version for this PCB, which is the Flatbox 4. And all you have to do is hit download and there's your firmware. So it's added to our desktop right now. So the one thing you'll see on our desktop right now, because you could run into problems. This is a nuke file. If you have problems flashing firmware onto this board, you want to flash the nuke first. Now you're saying, how do you flash? So plug this into your computer. Now you're going to hold uh, the boot button and reset. And that is the main reason why we didn't put this in the housing because we wouldn't be able to get to these buttons if we couldn't do that. And then all you have to do is drag and drop your firmware onto the board, onto the drive, and it's flashed. It's that easy. Now let's go over to our settings. And we are going to go to Bluetooth and devices, and then go to devices and scroll down to see if our controller is there. And it is there, the Xbox 360 controller, that's what it's gonna originally show up as. Now you wanna to go to more devices and printer settings. And you'll see it again, you wanna right click, go to game settings, and then go to properties. And here is where we're going to test the controller and see if all our buttons are actually working. Oh, and we're bringing up the Xbox menu, so yes, it is working. So now our controller is all set, ready to go. We can unplug it. Let's get it inside the housing. The board is all set, the firmware is flashed. Now we have to add the board to the housing. Which isn't too hard. We place it in there, put some screws in there, and then put some keycaps on, and we should be ready to go. As you can see, now everything's together. It looks absolutely amazing. I love the fact that I used filament that's dual color, it's red and black, so it gives this weird like dual color like fade into it. It looks really neat. So we got some red accents on the side. Really cool aesthetic in general. Before we test it, here's the final shots of the controller and we're gonna get into playing some Street Fighter.
Now the controller is all set. It works great, but the next thing is, let's play some games. But before I get into playing some Street Fighter 6, because I'll get caught up all day playing this game, I want to thank you for watching this video. And if you liked this build and want to make this build, there'll be links below. And if you enjoyed the video, well, you know what to do. Hit subscribe, hit the bell, share it out on social media. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next build. Thank <laughs> you.